Welcome to our uh, God Design Family uh, series in our Sunday school. We are on our eighth lecture entitled Preparing for Marriage. So last week, uh, we, uh, we talked about the biblical courtship, yun yung ating kinag-aralan. Um, ngayon, so, so in-arrange ko to in a way na, 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 na sa sakto, sa kultura natin, as you know, in our culture, there is this uh, commitment Merong mutual agreement ang dalawang single uh, singles na magiging sila. So technically, technically, we call it in a relationship. So in that way, uh, yung biblical courtship was designed, the lecture last week was designed in a way na papunta ka pa lang doon. Now dito sa lecture na to, nandun ka na and you guys are preparing for marriage. Okay, so we have we designed it in this way kasi ito yung, ito yung sasakto sa kultura natin ngayon. Now, again, meron pa rin pangangailangan ng reformation even sa preparation of marriage. Kasi some, some say na hindi kailangan ng preparation. No? Uh, ito ay, ang, 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 ang tatahaki nating landas ay, is just basically the same. Nagsama lang tayo sa isang bubong. No? And for some, yung iba nga, tingin na hindi na kailangan kasi pwede naman kayo magsama sa isang bubong without marriage. Right, so there is a need for again for uh, reformation even in in how we think, um, even in uh, our preparation uh, for marriage. Sabi ni Joe, Joe Beaky and James Labelle sa kanilang book na Preparing for Marriage. Sabi nila marriage warrants preparation. It is the tying of such a knot, not dapat yan, that nothing but death can unloose. It has a determinative effect on the joy or, or woe of our lives. And it is an institution upon which God has been pleased to bestow many precious blessings. Kung naniniwala tayo, na pinag-aralan natin in the past weeks, na ang marriage is the, uh, the, the institution that God has, uh, has ordained in every home, na ito ay supposedly mag-imitate ng pagmamahal ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, then dapat lang talaga na paghandaan ng bawat uh, couple, bawat single men and women who are preparing for marriage, kailangan talaga nilang paghandaan ito wisely and thoughtfully. Okay? Now, I have, naglagay ako specifically ng apat na, or lima na pointers dito na tutulong sa atin. Kung, paano nga ba dapat? Anong klaseng preparation nga ba dapat? Okay, ito ay para doon sa mga, uh, of course, gustong ikasal in the future and uh, doon sa current na mayroong rela relasyon, mayroong mutual agreement na pagmamahalan. Hindi <laughs> okay. ko alam, ako natawa? Um, so, preparing for marriage, um, as we study this, it is presupposed na meron ng pag magkakilala na itong dalawang to, may friendship na sila. Uh, it is also presupposed na compatible sila. Okay? Compatible in a sense na alam mo tao, at least man lang kung, kung anong klaseng tao itong pangakasalan niya o kung itong karelasyon niya. Okay? At compatible ang kanilang ugali. Okay? Sabi ni Paul E. Brown, it is a good thing to begin with friendship. Uh, again, I think nabanggit ko ito uh, last time. Kaya nga commendable talaga. Ang, ang at least magkakilala muna talaga bago pumasok sa kahit anong klaseng uh, intimate relationship. Sabi ni Paul Brown, it is a good thing to begin with friendship and let the relationship deepen naturally as it takes its course. Takes its course. Obviously, two people will want to find out about each other in conversation, but that needs to be gradual and natural. It is unwise to try to find out too much at the beginning and to cross-question the other too much. In time, Christians should want to speak about spiritual things. It is important to talk about how each one came to know the Lord and the develop, development of their spiritual life. As time goes on, conversation will turn to those things which are very important for each of them. There is the possibility of disagreement and perhaps a need for them to modify some belief or understanding which has been taken for granted without thinking through. So he's saying that it's so important at least talagang kilalang kilala mo ang iyong uh, karelasyon or to be specific, ang iyong pakakasalan. And also, presuppose din dapat na nagkaroon ng biblical worship 
kagaya, a biblical courtship kagaya ng ating pinag-aralan last week. Ano, bang, ano nga uli ang biblical courtship? Uh, just a review. It should be that the son is reared up for independence. He is trained to live while still respecting his parents' godly counsel. And then uh, the daughter is brought up to be transferred from one state of dependence to another. Bakit? Ano kasi ang mod- biblical model ng courtship? Sons live, sons pursue, daughters are given by their fathers. Okay? Sabi rin, Joel Biki. Marriage itself cannot make two com- people compatible. Sabi ko kanina, na presuppose din ang compatibility nila. Marriage itself cannot make two people compatible. It is, na- it is naive, it is not, if not foolish, to imagine that two people who find themselves incompatible before marriage will be compatible after marriage. As if marriage was sort of cure-all that wa- washed away all blemishes in one's character and behavior and reconciled two persons that beforehand were as ill-suited to one another as night and day. On the contrary, marriage exposes one's true character and behavior. Whatever causes friction before the marriage will only cause more friction during marriage. If you think na talagang for some reason, hindi talaga magtugma o galing yung dalawa at lagi kayo nag-aaway. If you think that marriage will fix that, uh, think again. Sinasabi dito ni Joel Biki. Okay? Kasi hindi ito ang cure. It, it's maybe the... Yun, yun, yun yung senyales na, okay, hindi talaga dapat. Probably hindi talaga. Hindi ko kayang respetuhin itong lalaki. So I don't think talagang magsasubmit ako sa ganitong klaseng lalaki na hindi niya kayang i-lead itong relationship na to. I don't think kaya kong uh, maibigay itong pagmamahal na, na kailangan ko ibigay dito sa 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 aking uh, karelasyon uh, given na siya ay talagang very strong for me. Compatibility. Now, first, no? first sa ating mga pointers dito. Unang-una, again, no, sa ating kultura ngayon, no, meron tayong tinatawag na engagement. Okay? Ano ba to? Technically, ito yung nagpapakita talaga na okay, talagang sin- sinilya, sin- ay, ay, sinil ko na yung deal. Ito na talaga, gagawin ko talaga to. Okay? Gagawin ko talaga tong kasal na ito. Una, be engaged. Now, engagement, parang pareho lang sa custom ng betrothal sa scripture na alam natin sa panahon ng mga Israelites. Pero nung panahon nila, ang, ang betrothal or ang engagement ng mga tayo nila ay pwedeng ma-break off by divorce. Okay? In fact, even sa mga ibang culture, meron pa rin ganitong klaseng engagement na pwedeng by divorce at pwede ka pa rin masanction if you break it off if you break off the engagement. Makita natin yun sa Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 19 kay Joseph. Nung nalaman niya na buntis si Mary, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together. See, hindi pa sila Mary dito, betrothed, betrothed pa lang sila. Sabi dito, before they came together. Okay? Sexual union yun. She was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. So basically, it was just for Joseph, it was righteous for Joseph to think that way. To think of even divorcing a woman who, kasi tingin niya, probably merong ibang nakarelasyon si Mary kaya siya nabuntis. Pero all, as, of course, we know na hindi ganun ang nangyari. Pero pinapakita dito, na tama yung technically yung, yung resolve no yung disposition ni Joseph which simply means na again pwede niyang i break off itong engagement na ito katulad din ng panahon natin ngayon no sabi Paul Brown in the past if a man broke off an engagement in some countries he could be sued in the courts by the woman for breach of promise but that is no longer the case. When an engagement is called off, it may well cause great heartache. Ito na ngayon. Especially if it is a one-sided decision. However, it is better 
to have a broken engagement than a miserable or broken marriage. Better still is only to get engaged when both man and woman are sure of each other. So again, be engaged. Hindi naman ngayon, no? Pero at least, make sure na kasama ito sa plano mo as, as a man, no? Uh, na ikaw ay uh, meron kang, you entered into this mutual relationship, dapat nakaplano na, um, or, or at least, nasa isip mo, as a goal, pakasalan ang iyong karelasyon. And also, when we talk about engagement, both, of course, both families must have been informed prior to the formal engagement. Most importantly, sa um, pinaka-importanting requirement ay ang consent ng parents. Now, kung babasahin natin mga puritan sa mga sulat nila, they, they wrote heavily on family. Family worship, marriage, Isa sa mga common na, na, na nilalabit talaga nila, na tingin nila na kailangan ng reformation na nawala no, during the Dark Ages ay yung pag-aas ng consent sa parents. And they believe that it is an outright violation of the Fifth Commandment. It is dishonoring the parents. Okay? And they are right. No? Tama sila. However, sabi ni Joel Bicky, for while children should submit to their parents, parents should not compel their children to marry an unbeliever or someone in whom they see no compatibility and whom they cannot love entirely. Furthermore, while parents should not advise their children to marry someone for their beauty, riches, or high station, neither should children ask their parents to approve their marriages to someone with whom they are merely infatuated. For a marriage quickly made is often grounded on a faulty foundation and soon regretted. Parents must therefore help their children choose with discernment and wisdom someone they can love entirely and constantly from the day of their wedding until the day of their parting. So, ito natin ang um, napakagandang responsibility ng parents when it comes to the marriage of uh, their children. No? Um, so, pero sinasabi rito ni Joel Vicky, uh, kung, ang, kung ang parent naman ay gusto, ang gusto naman ng parent ay yung anak niya ay mapakasalan na Ang gusto ay unbeliever, of course, uh, na, na, na pag-aralan natin yung last week. It's something na hindi tayo, hindi pa pwede yun. No? To be, in fact, it would not be dishon, it would be, it would not be honoring your parents if you dishonor the Lord. Okay? You have to be, of course, again, you have to uh, be prayerful pag pray mo ang iyong parents and of course, uh, pag pray mo na ikaw ay mabigyan ng uh, strength, the right words to say to persuade your parents. Okay? Secondly, be committed to marriage. Be committed to marriage. In fact, never be in a relationship if the word wedding, if the word marriage is taboo. In maraming ganong relationship. Huwag natin pag-usapan yan. Uh, kasi it, it brings a lot of, ano, para napaka- Bigat na responsibility kagad. For in fact, if you have entered such a relationship already, dapat na, yun yung, yun yung end goal, technically. Okay? So never be in such relationship if wedding or marriage is something that the both of you are not comfortable talking about. In fact, dapat madalas nyo to ito pag-uusapan. Yung marriage. Okay? Now, there are important things to think about and to get settled. Like it's a handout. Where, where are we going to live? Can we both continue to work? What about children? When will they hope to start a family? How many do they desire to have? How will they handle money? What church will they belong to? Now, of course, the answers to these questions will depend partly upon circumstances and iba-ibang circumstances natin lahat, situations natin. But the important thing is that they're all prayed about and discussed honestly together. Okay? Very important. 
Now, of course, when we say be committed to marriage, be committed also doon sa isang araw na celebration na yon, yung wedding, right? A wedding is clearly a very important day in the lives of those being married. Gaya ng uh, ilagay natin dyan. <clears throat> Sabi ni Paul Brown, best clothes, usually new, are worn for the occasion. So technically, pati, of course, yung wedding, pag-aandaan nyo rin, right? So best clothes, usually new, are worn for the occasion. The bride especially tries to have a dress befitting the occasion with special dresses for the bridesmaid also. While these things are not essential, it is right to make the ceremony a special one. Clothes, guests, a public service, a special meal together. All these things combine to set such an occasion apart. To have a wedding service using memorable and suitable words and passages of scripture, appropriate hymns and prayers completes the occasion. Okay? Now, some, ay, of course, gumagasos ng napakalaki naman. No? Often, large sums of money are spent on the wedding itself. However, kailangan natin ma-realize na tayo ay stewards ng blessing na ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos. No? papasukin ba natin ang marriage na punong-puno tayo ng utang sa pag-isipan natin? Okay? Thirdly, be committed, most importantly, to the God of marriage. Habang singles, especially. What establishes the foundation, sabi ni Douglas Wilson, what establishes the foundation for any godly marriage is covenantal faithfulness to the God who gives us marriage. He gave us the principles, the rules, the laws that, gov the, that govern marriage, and we serve God with a whole heart as we take these things to heart and then treat our spouse obediently and lawfully with a good will, dependent entirely upon the grace of God in Christ. With a whole heart, a man should, as what the Bible requires of him in his treatment of his wife, a wife must ask the same concerning the treatment of her husband. When Christians enter into the covenant of marriage this way, they are blessed with wonderful marriages. Not surprisingly, an obedient man and wife have strong emotional and romantic attachments to one another. But when romance is the foundation, the house does not take very long at all before it starts to crumble. Have we sought God in this relationship? Is he really the foundation of such relationships? Okay. Be committed. How? Practical ways. No? Of course, personally, you have to engage in the means of grace. You have your personal daily means of grace. Um, the man or the woman individually should engage in these means and they should also both together uh, be engaged in the corporate means of grace in the church. No? And the man should be having devotions individually and ideally together. Pwede na niya ma-practice yung leadership niya through leading such devotions. Read books together in preparation for marriage. I highly recommend a series of Douglas Wilson, um, kay Joel Beatty, kay William Goge, the Puritan. Meron siyang tatlong volume na Building a Godly Home. Read these books together. No? Fourthly, be committed to purity. Okay? The couple must help one another fight the temptations of lust. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Never go to a place where you know that you will be vulnerable, that the two of you will be vulnerable. Hello ba ng kotse, kayong dalawa? Hindi, kaya naman namin tiisin eh. Really. Huwag nating toksuhin ang nanunokso. Huwag nating bigyan ng opportunity. Hindi natin, baka makalimutan natin kung gaano ka, katuso ito 
itong tempter na to. He's been doing this since the beginning, since more than 6,000 years. And he's very crafty. And if we think na kayang-kaya natin ito without prayer, and then tayo mismo willingly entering in that vulnerable state where we will be tempted, then nagkakamali po tayo. Never be together without anyone else in the room or even in a car, I suggest. Be careful. Also, sexual conversations. Akala natin na, okay, this is not really the hindi naman ito yung real thing. Medyo na, na kakaroon, na-entice ang aming mga desires. No? Alam, nare-realize ko because of these conversations na, okay, she likes me talaga. Mahal niya ako that she's attracted sa akin. So, hindi naman namin, wala naman kami ginagawang act or deed. No. Sexual conversations na nage-entire, nage-entice sa ating mga desire, kailangan itong tanggalin and be put to death. Sabi ni Paul sa Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 to 4, but sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Paul wasn't just talking about yung mga biru-biruan. Yung mga simpleng joke-joke time. Hindi. Itong in context, ang sinasabi niya rito yung crude ay yung mga patungkol sa sex. And Ephesians was a pagan city. It is a pagan city in their time. At Marami, of course, maraming just Josan sa Ephesus. At kilala rin ang Ephesus just like Corinth uh, sa kanilang sexual immorality. Okay? Marami ring uh, nasa, poly, uh, nasa poly, polygamous relationship doon. Mas sinasabi ni Paul, huwag nyo na yung gagawin. Hindi na kayo, hindi na kayo uh, part ng kamunduhan na ito. Kayo ay iniligtas na ng Panginoon at hindi ito proper among you who are being sanctified by the Lord. Even itong mga ganitong klaseng conversation. So I say the same thing. To all the singles who are preparing for marriage, put this to death. Also, both of them must dress appropriately. Now, alam natin sa 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 9 to 10, kasi specific sa mga women, dahil sila, yung mga, yung mga time na yon na talaga nagsosuot ng mga maraming braids, maraming mga uh, alahas para mapakita yung kanilang kagandahan. Yung iba, uh, kita pa even yung kanilang mga balat. No? Kita dito sa 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9, 9 to 10, likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. May malalaman ba ng, ng mga tao na ikaw ay nagpo-profess ng godliness na, na galing sa Diyos kung ang, ang ganitong klaseng apparel? Imodest apparel ang pinapakita. Ang inilagay ko sa handout na both men and women should dress appropriately. Why? Kasi even mga lalaking ngayon. No? If, you, if you go to social media, talagang yung damit ay wala. Walang damit. <laughs> Kasi gano'n na ngayon. Right? Be careful. Nakakala natin na ito ay What? Whatever your purpose is, hindi natin alam kung ano yung mga nasa isip ng mga nakakakita. Let us be careful. Baka tayo ay maging stumbling block. Especially sa ating mga mahal na brothers and sisters. Now, now, now to be specific, no? sa, sa mga magkakarelasyon na ganito, alagdaan nyo yung bawat isa. Protektahan nyo yung bawat isa pagdating dito. How a person dresses reveals how he sees himself and how he wants others to see him. Is he dressing so others will think better of him than he is? Is he dressing for men or for the Lord? Is a woman dressing to attract the eyes of men? Is she in, if she enjoys enticing men's eyes, what does this reveal of her heart's desires? Or is she dressing modestly to reflect her humility before the Lord? 
so that her beauty, which is a gift from the Lord for her husband, does not prove a stumbling block to others. Apparel is often a sure window into the heart's desires and inclinations. That's true. Therefore, beware of those who dress to be seen as servants of men and not as the servants of God. Fifthly, and lastly, no? kailangan ng guidance. Be under the counseling of the pastor or if, if the church has uh, uh, plurality of elders, kahit, ano, kahit sino doon sa mga pastor na yon. So be under the counseling of the pastor or, pa or pastors in your local church. And preferably, of course, uh, you married. Okay? I mean, for obvious reasons, not the a pastor who is single. So, um, so people planning to get married should undergo premarital counseling with their pastors. Add to this, no, sa, sa country natin or sa iba rin, no? Sa may mga sa municipalities, minsan nagre-require ng mga seminar. Uh, I suggest na kung kinakailangan yun, then take it. Pero that should not replace yung spiritual na mismong galing sa inyong church na counseling. Okay? The couple needs spiritual guidance and accountability in their relationship. And the couple should consider this even before engagement. Sometimes we think na okay, kailangan mag-engage muna kami bago namin... Uh, bago kami magpa-counsel, hindi. Uh, as early as now. No? As early as now. Ano bang purpose ng counseling na to? Para ang mga couples ay ma-acquaint. Ma so dun sa mga dumaan sa, sa PMC, familiar kayo sa purposes na to, to acquaint them with main biblical materials related to marriage and home, to seek to convey realistic overview of what is involved in a working at a God-honoring marriage, so meron mga pag-uusapan na of course realistic naman sa marriage to expose potential problem areas and to encourage openness and transparency. Okay? And lastly, as a conclusion, tumaga tayo uh, kasi baka marami tayong ano. While marriage will have its challenges, it is a great blessing from God. Therefore, people who are currently in relationships must prepare for marriage wisely and thoughtfully. They must look forward to it with great anticipation because it is God's way to allow, to show Christ's love for His church in their homes. Right, that ends our lecture. Next week, ang topic ay singlehood. Any questions? Questions? Okay, asking for a friend. Uh, hello, Pas. On, pod, on modest dressing in the context of dating, how should we respond if a friend says his dressing is okay, however skin-bearing it is, since her BF or GF is okay with it? Claims he or she is actually not stumbling because of his partner's choice of clothing or the lack of it. Hey, hey, naman. Okay, so so is it really re revealing? And uh, papano natin na sabing revealing galing ba talaga sa ibang tao? And if that's the case, then I would heed that ano warning. Uh, I don't know the your name your, the your friend's name. Uh, so yeah, so so again, uh, if it is indeed skin bearing, as you've said then it's better to heed that warning. Uh, kasi kung, kung sinasabi niya na siya naman ay hindi nagsastumble, how about the other? Um, so, ayun. So, uh, pero basically, magpo-fall din ito talaga uh, doon sa guy na pwede niyang kausapin ang kanyang uh, girlfriend about it. Pwede na niya i-practice yung ganitong klaseng leadership as early as now. Questions?
Oh yes. Uh, technically, hindi not just because okay, ito ay uh, kumbaga, okay, you can do that. Hindi naman ako nagsa-stumble. But of course, you're posting it publicly. Uh, your church members can see it. Your church members, the, the men in the church who are also struggling with lust can see it. And you don't know whether they are, when they look at it, they would struggle or not. And we cannot assume it. Mahirap yun eh. But it's better to heed the call of the, of the scripture na uh, kinatawag na especially young women sa modest apparel. So the answer to that question is yes. Yep. Okay, any more questions? Uh, then, Cortez. Pas hindi personal, pero meron ding ahong mga friends um, from comments from before. So, kasi diba, there's this, um, parang yung, yung guy is supposed to be the one to spiritually lead. So, kunyari yung guy bagong kristyano, or like, the girl has been a Christian for a while. Tapos sinasabihin siya kailangan spiritually mature na dapat yung lalaki. Is there like a way to gauge that? Or because both are believers, there shouldn't be a problem. Like what is the biblical stand for that? For what specifically? Alindor. For spiritual maturity, quote-unquote. Tsaka yung readiness nung lalaki to lead that, that woman, that girl right. towards marriage. Uh, mahirap kasi i-measure na okay, uh, ready ka na. Uh, na-take mo na yung study one, study two, pwede ka nang maging lead. Parang ganun. Hindi, hindi ganun eh. Hindi, we, we cannot measure it that way. They, they, we, we cannot measure it that way. Um, so generally speaking, yung sinasabi ko po ah. Um, sorry, no, wala ako. Uh, anyway, so, uh, sabi ko, okay. uh, wala, wala specifically, pero masasuggest ko dun sa guy, then, Uh, take that lead now. Uh, be more engaged sa church. Kasi makakatulong talaga ang church sa kanya. Yung pastor ng church na yon, matutulungan siya, mag-guide. Kung sila ay nag-PMC, pwedeng avenue yon for, for, uh, for the pastor to help him or through shepherding, counseling. Uh, ako yung nasasuggest ko dun sa, sa, dun sa guy. Uh, instead of thinking na kailan ba ako magiging ready and all, gawin mo na ngayon. Uh, help yourself uh, by of course, engaging with the means of grace na available sa church. Kasama na doon, of course, ang fellowship. Okay, any more questions? Si Michael Lewis. Hi, Pastor. If the boyfriend or girlfriend is struggling with lust, should they open this up to the one they are in a relationship with sort of as an accountability and to build honestly early on between the two? That is a great question. Okay? Now, preferably, if you guys are married, you should. You should open this up to get uh, doon sa iyong uh, asawa. However, we have to take note na hindi pa kayo mag-asawa. And you, have to, you also have to take note na probably this would, instead of makatulong, ay makalala pa doon sa iyong uh, uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, especially if they're struggling with lust. Now, depende again no, on, on anong klaseng uh, struggle ito. Okay? So, at kailangan, kilalanin mo yung kilala mo kung si yung karelasyon mo. Is it something na kapag sinabi ko sa kanya instead na sabihin ko sa pastor ko about this, yung mga specifics nito, eh baka mag-struggle pa to. Kung married kayo, you should. Okay? Pero, kung kilala mo naman na uh, of course, ang iyong boyfriend or girlfriend ay spiritually mature at it's at ang relationship nyo ay hindi naman nagsa-struggle technically doon sa area na yun, then you can. So again, We cannot give a specific yes or no. Depende yon, of course, sa iyong karelasyon. We have, to also, we have to consider kasi na hindi pa kayo kasal. Eh. Hindi pa kayo kasal. Okay? Question. Uh, sige, asa na tayo? Sorry. Ah, kigiya. On spiritual maturity naman, past hehe. 
how do we respond if guy friends say that it's better for them to pursue new girls in church? Because by God's design, it is easier for them to spiritually lead someone new in the faith. Someone who's not yet indoctrinated with church culture, etc. You're welcome, ladies. Um, hmm. Well, hindi natin to sasabihin na okay, ganito dapat ang gawin nyo, guys. Pag merong nag apply na bago, alam nyo na. Hindi, of course, hindi. Hindi po, hindi po ganun ang thinking natin pagdating sa 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 marriage. Now, kung bagong pasok sa church at uh, okay, uh, new in the faith, tapos eh, siya talaga yung technically, providentially na ibinigay sa harap mo, then why not? Tapos membro pa ng church, why not? Pero we shouldn't have it as a mindset na whenever there's someone new, okay. Men, hindi po ganun. Okay. So technically, hindi natin, ina, hindi natin inaalis yung possibility that it can happen. That it can happen. Ceci, how soon in the relationship is it good to start going to PMC? Like, what are the qualifiers asking for me? Oh, yeah, very uh... <laughs> Okay, then I will be very specific, Ceci. I'll be, I'll be very specific sa yung uh, question. Ceci, pag pumayag ng parents mo at pag naka na si AJ. Sige. Uh, uh, si Deacon Joey, right? CHC host? Uh, okay. So the point how you dress is a reflection of how you perceive yourself and how you want others to perceive you is a good one. Liberals will say, however, that we should not be concerned about how others perceive us. True, because that is based on their personal biases and opinions and prejudices. In other words, if they perceive us negatively, that is their problem, not ours. So walang accountability talaga ang mga sasabihin ng mga liberal. That is true. Uh, asking for another friend, si Gia. Can you, can you be close friends with someone of the opposite gender who is engaged? Uh, add, if you're used to being close to the opposite sex naman, ang friend mo na yung guy or girl even before he she got engaged. I think na, nothing wrong naman doon as long as there is that boundary still. Kasi hindi naman po... I don't know kung gano, kung anong klaseng closeness ito, pero there should be a boundary. Anong klaseng boundary? Of course, just as yung dalawang magkarelasyon na hindi pwede magkasama with uh, a lot of people, I think dapat mag apply yon even sa magkaibigan. So there should be a boundary uh, pa rin. Okay? And ngayon pa lang, uh, dapat napa, mas napapractice na niyang maging closer friend niya yung kanyang pakakasalan. Remember, isa sa mga purposes ng marriage ay magkakaroon ka ng confident at uh, best friend, technically. Right? Alam niyo yun, na kapag ang, ang asawa mo should be your best friend, right? Lagi yun makikita, lagi natin yung maririnig sa mga vows ng, ng, ng wedding. <laughs> na, the, I am now married to my best friend. Right? Pero that's, that's true naman. So si AJ. Oh, si AJ! Okay. So, hi, Pass. What? While in the dating stage, are you asking for you, uh, AJ, or, or for a friend? Hi, Pass. While in the dating stage, what kind of devotion devotion should the couple be doing? Specific to marriage preparation? But not, not really. No? Uh, you, may, you may go ahead and read books about preparation of marriage. Uh, pero uh, when you do, uh, go through a book. Start with John. Um, go through the books of uh, the scripture. Um, maganda kung kung medyo medyo hirap pa ngayon pwede nyo daanan yung dinadaanan din mismo ng church okay? pwede nyo rin gamitin yung family worship uh, guide technically guide lang naman yun eh. no? so pwede nyo rin yung gamitin Gia wow this is a hard one one more is is it okay to last over your wife or all lust is bad okay so some, one, one thing that uh, pornography uh, feeds to men ay yung, yung beastly kind of sex. Right? And hindi ganon yung, yung pinapakita sa atin ng scripture pagdating sa sex. Read Song of Solomon, hindi ganon. Hindi ganon ang kind of sex na pinapakita sa atin ng scripture. May pagmamahal, mayroong care, At hindi ko na yung sasabihin, basahin nyo na lang yung Song of Solomon. So, Lust 
is sin. So I would assume na you mean to say na you're, you're thinking of whatever you want to do uh, to your wife or to your husband. It's not good. Yan yung na-feed sa atin sa, sa, sa culture natin ngayon. Ito yung pinipid sa atin ng at yung masama na pinipid sa atin ng pornography. So beware. <laughs> oh, uh, Nire-require na po ni Deacon Anton ang bawat question ay maglagay ng asking for a friend or asking for self. <clears throat> si Kim, asking for anyone concerned. <laughs> including myself. What is appropriate submission, if any, to your uh, boyfriend? So that is a great question. Um, siguro submission to, uh, to his spiritual leading, if he reminds you that, Kim, are you, have you been reading your, your Bible for in the past week? Submit to him in these areas. No? Hindi naman yung, kung hindi, for example, yung, yung expenses mo, yung money mo, hindi, wala pa kayong conjugal rights, hindi pa niya pag-aari yun, wala pa kayo doon. Right? Pero pagdating sa mga spiritual, pwede ka na mag-submit sa kanya. Pwede mo na i-practice yung ganoong submission. Kasi importante na madadala niya yun. Madadala, madadala niya yun sa kanyang marriage with you. Gia and Ken, can I charge na a service fee for every... Okay, any more questions? Hello. Uh, si Stevenson, how should we talk or deal with people who are living in together? Do we look at them and deal with them like people who are engaged or people who are married or simply people who are sinning? So that is a great question. Um, kailangan natin maging truthful dito, the latter. No, uh, it would be a sin uh, kapag ang, ang ang cohabitation. No, technically, kasi inaalaw nila ang sarili nila doon sa area kung saan talaga sila sobrang vulnerable sa temptation. Okay? So, hindi sila married, hindi rin sila engaged. Technically, cohabitation kasi. Last question po. Asking for anyone. <laughs> ano po? Ah, uh... Paano po Pasko pag po yung couple nag-fall na doon po sa sa ano po sa purity po. Uh, yung context po is for a believer na in a relationship to unbeliever and also kapag naman po yung believer is in a relationship with a believer naman doon. Okay, so doon sa both cases ay nag-fall sila sa sexual immorality, tama ba? Tama. Yes po, okay. Pas. So doon sa unang case, believer sa unbeliever, ang kailangan gawin ng believer, kailangan niyang hiwalay ang kaagad yung unbeliever. Uh, kasi malinaw yun na uh, technically, hindi lang yung uh, premarital sex yung sin doon, but also yung relationship itself ay pinagbabawal ng scripture. So kailangan niyang gawin yun unang-una. Pangalawa doon sa, sa couple na yun, uh, kailangan nilang magpa-counsel sa kanilang pastor. At kailangan nilang tigilan yung sexual immorality nila ngayon. So mag-undergo sila ng discipline. And by the way, when we say discipline, hindi ka agad excommunication po ang church discipline. Even yung someone rebuking you, that is church discipline already. Okay? So may proseso kasi tayo pagdating sa church discipline. So dadaan sila doon. Especially kung sila ay parehong church members, kailangan nila dumaan doon. Now, pwedeng ang resulta, ay again, iba-ibang circumstances, pwedeng ang resulta ay sabihin na dahil kilala na sila kilala sila ng pastor at alam na yung alam yung nangyayari sa kanila stop uh, ma, 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 maiging kailangan maghiwalay sila or ba, baka depende sa circumstances baka hindi paghiwalay thank you po yep ah maganda yung point ni Dick Joy yes hindi hindi ayan so, kung ikaw ay single at hindi pa kasal, uh, kailangan primary, ikaw pa rin ay under ng authority ng iyong parents. Wala ka pa sa bagong government. No? Wala pa, hindi, ka, hindi pa kayo kasal, kaya hindi pa uh, talagang primary authority ang iyong asawa. Kasi hindi pa kayo kasal. Si Anton, last question for parents preparing na ang mga anak ay mag-date. Okay? 
Paano po pwede mag-prepare ang parents na maging open ang mga anak? Ha? Paano po pwede mag-prepare ang parents na maging open? Maging, maging open ang mga anak ay mag-take. Sino pong pwede makapag-translate? <laughs> paano maging, paano maging uh, pwede mag-prepare ang parents na maging open ang mga anak? sa mag Okay. I think yun yung ibig niya sabihin. How can we prepare? How can we prepare sa thought of our kids are going today? Ah, okay. Well, to be honest, uh, nakasalalay talaga sa mga magulang yan. Uh, dapat napag-uusapan. No? Kung, uh, depende rin of course sa age ng iyong anak. Uh, maaring hindi nila kaagad maintindihan yan. No? Pero nakadepende yun sa, of course, makilala mo yung iyong anak, malalaman no, kung kailan niya supposedly mas mag-gets at mas maintindihan yan. Pero dapat manggaling ito talaga sa magulang. Uh, so kasama ito sa kanyang pagtuturo, uh, hindi ito isang upuan lang, hindi ito isang araw lang. Of course, uh, boom, uh, probably teenage life or even earlier pa kung, kung mas naiintindihan nila. In that way, kailangan ma-prepare sila. Secondly, yung relationship ng mag-asawa ay preparation yon na nakikita ng kanilang mga anak. Ang anak ay pag nakita ang ganitong klaseng ama, O ang anak na lalaki nakikita ang kanyang ama na ganito, then I should be like this when I grow up. Kung ganito, kung lalaking anak nakikita ang, ang kanyang ina na talagang inaalagaan siya, talagang submissive sa kanyang uh, asawa, then maghahanap ako as, as a child na na-ingrain sa kanyang mind na ganitong klaseng asawa ang kanyang hahanapin. So, very important yung pangalawa na modeling ng mag-asawa na in this way ay talagang uh, na-prepare ang minds ng mga anak. Sabi ni Anton, ano po ang advice nyo sa mga parent na strict sa mga anak to date, mga tipong pag 40 years old na pwede? Um, ano advice ko sa parent na strict? Hindi ako makakapag-advise kagad. Siguro tatanungin ko muna kung bakit, uh, Deacon. I'll ask first kung bakit, bakit ganun yung decision nila. I'm sure meron pang mas malalim na reason. So, hindi ko makapagbigay ng specific na answer dyan. Pass what daw po is appropriate physical affection for couples and engaged couples from a friend who's milking? Who's milking? Ask for a friend while it's for free pa. Okay. Um... It's always better uh, na hindi gisingin yung natutulog na apoy. No? Uh, ewan ko na ano yung ibig ko sabihin. Pero wag tayo, at least wag nating itry na gawin yung mga bagay na kahit tingin natin ay hindi naman yun yung, 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 yung talagang act. Eh. Hindi naman yun yun. Eh. Pero kung tinatry natin, unti-unti, iniintice natin because of the physical affection, okay, whatever, in whatever way, no itong physical affection na to then it's better na wag tayong tumulong sa pagiging stumbling block sa ating karelasyon okay mas kilala nyo yung yung karelasyon nyo specifically about uh, patungkol sa mga ganitong issues patungkol sa uh, struggle with lust so i would suggest na na especially wag too much no wag wag nating ano wag nating gisingin yon Mamaya natutulog yun. Andre Garcia, hello pastor. If a fresh Christian couple are in a long distance relationship, one of the party being in another country, is it unwise to engage in that relationship for a long amount of time, especially with the pandemic? Okay. Um, again, very specific scenario. Uh, I, I need to know more. Uh, ito ba ay, ano ba, matagal na ba kayo? Or wala, technically, wala pa kayo? O, o baga, doon kayo naging kayo nung kayo'y malayo uh, or talagang never mo siya nakita pa in the first place. Uh, ito ay because of the chat. So mga ganitong questions yung itatanong ko siguro, Andrea, para mas malinaw yung ating sagot. Kasi kung, kung ganyan na kayo ay in a relationship naman at and because, just because of the pandemic ay nagkahiwalay kayo, then pwede namang maghintay, pwede namang umuwi yung tao. So, hindi, hindi tayo kagad magsabi na, I never met po. Uh, uh, I don't advise that, uh, Andrea. Better talaga na kilala mo din yung, yung tao. Nahihirap kasi yan eh. 
Okay, more questions. Oi, seguia. How do you encourage single friends to abide by these biblical principles when what they see as ideal relationships in social media are so different from what we are learning in church? Ang pinaka uh, advice ko talaga ay um, talagang engage kayo sa sa grasya ng Panginoon, sa mga means kung saan niyo makukuha 'yon. Uh, so sa church, kumbaga you don't get your learnings from social media posts by anyone you know. Um, although baka okay naman yung mga posts nila pero hindi yun yung ano natin, source natin ang source natin ay ang scripture now saan? saan madalas talaga pinag-uusapan? saan laging pinag-uusapan ang scripture? saan laging pinipreach at pinuproklama ang scripture? sa church kailan pinuproklama ito? kailan ito pinag-uusapan talaga? sa araw ng Diyos so, yun yung mga advice ko sa mga singles na Uh, be more engaged sa ano sa sa means of grace na ginawang available para sa atin ng Diyos. Ang gagawin mo na lang kukuha ka ng balde at uh, pupunta ka dun sa fountain at kukunin mo lahat ng tubig. 'Yun na lang ang gagawin mo. So be more engaged doon. Si Stevens, no, sorry di ko nakuha yung sagot sa question ko. To clarify for Christian friends we know that are living in sin. So I was asking how would you how would you best convict them wow of their sin with love and grace if they are claiming to be believers in a church that does not practice church discipline Stevenson uh, I cannot tell you how specifically kasi ikaw mas nakakilala sa yung Christian friends ang masasabi ko lang sa iyo and yes kailangan mong sabihin sa kanila na ito ay hindi talaga tama ito ay kasalanan sa Diyos no especially na sila ay Kristiyano sabihin mo sa kanila na maging accountable sila sa isang church kasi doon mayroon talagang disiplina kasi kapag hindi talaga nagiging accountable ang isang professing Christian sa isang church, then isa lang din ibig sabihin nun, ayokong makita nila itong ganitong ginagawa ko. Okay? Pwedeng ganun. Pwedeng ganun. Hindi ko din na-generalize, pero pwede, pwede kasing ganoon. No? So, uh, kausapin mo sila. Kung kaibigan mo sila, then sabihan mo sila na, na ito ay mali, ito ay kasalanan uh, sa Diyos, especially na sila ay mga Kristiyano pa. Uh, nilalagay nila ang kanilang sarili sa kapahamakan. Bigay mo yung James chapter 1 verses 13 to 14. So, okay na okay ba Stevenson or may follow up ka doon? Or anyone? Meron pa po ba dito? Luis. Yep, no problem Stevenson. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, past both um, Christians, couple, tapos deeply struggling in sin. They are struggling with sin. Anong sin? Actual sin. Um, is it right to consider yung option ni Paul agad na pag hindi kaya, magpakasal na? Pero kitang-kita na unrepentant yung couple. Unrepentant? Oo. Kasi nga... Nag- hindi repentant. Hindi repentant. Un- okay. Oo. Tapos, kitang-kita na they're still living in sin, in sexual sin, nag live in. So, consider na lang nila yung option ni Paul. Um, would that be the best decision to get married? Or dapat bang kailangan makita yung repentance in fighting yung sin na yun by living as a couple na pure? Uh, yan ba? Nag-make sense ba? Right. Okay. So, depende yun. Uh, remember, ang, ang, ang call ni Paul, ang heed ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians chapter 7 na sinasabi niya na kung uh, it was a general call. No? Especially sa mga singles na wala pang asawa. Kung kaya yung nabong problema dito, kailangan yung maghanap ng mapapangasawa kasi yung ginagawa niyo ngayon, it would be a valid thing because sex is a good thing you're making it a bad thing now because the marriage bed is undefiled because of what you're doing, be married. Para yung ginagawa mo ngayon will not be sin anymore. 
Ganun technically yung sinasabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 7. Na magdidepende yon. Kung sinasabi mong unrepentant yung dalawa, okay? Kumbaga, this is not the first in the first uh, time, right? Kasi we have to consider that is also when it comes to church discipline. Hindi porke na okay, isang bagsak ang nagkamali na, oy, ano na, uh, excommunication. Hindi ka hindi ganoon ang thinking natin. Ito ba ay talagang paulit-ulit? No, in that case na sinabi mo na unrepentant, would marriage technically resolve such sexual immorality? Yung kanyang sexual yung sexual immorality ba nila ay talagang sa kanilang dalawa lang or meron pa silang secret sexual immoral sins, no? Na again, hindi 'yon mabuti, right? So maaaring in that case na kung unrepentant sila, kailangan talaga nilang mag-undergo ng church discipline. At kung unrepentant pa rin sila after many months, alam na natin kung saan patungo 'yon, no? So mara, so malaking possibility na in that case ay hindi sila uh, magkasal. Again, depende kasi sa, sa situation at kung, kung, kung ano yung pagkakilala, let's say, ng pastor doon sa couple na yon. So, magdidepende pa din yun. Eh. So, I cannot give a, a, a talagang solid answer ng, of course, hindi natin alam yung mga ugali, yung situations. So, okay, si Gia. Pass, one more for a new friend. Wow, okay. Are soul ties biblical? Also generational curses that affect our relationship. When you say generational curses, ito yung kunwari ang, kunwari lang, ha, gen, ano lang ito, uh, example lang, kunwari, ang, if, I, if I, kung tama ang aking understanding, ito yung kunwari ay uh, ang iyong grandfather or even yung ama ay talagang nag-struggle sa probably uh, womanizing tapos in a way ay ito ay na nakuha mo ganun ba yung ibig mong sabihin doon kasi naniniwala tayo sa original sin at ang uh, nang pinanggalingan talaga ng sin natin ay kay Adam so regardless ka kung whether womanizing or whatever sin ng iyong ama hindi mo yung technically na na kumbaga parang na, na impute sa iyo yung ganoong sin no sinner ka na talaga no now pwedeng providentially no ay yung mga nakikita mo sa iyong ama ay marahil makaapekto sa thinking ng tao na yon na okay uh, kasi ganun ganun ka lumaki dahil nakita mo yon so in a way it can affect the child pero hindi tayo naniniwala na just just because ang ang sin ng kanyang ama ay ganito then ang sin ng anak ay magiging ganun din hindi po tayo naniniwala sa ganun. So si Mark, I pass what if a couple not married if, and is unequally yoked na sexually what if a couple not married and is unequally yoked na sexually active got pregnant does it mean they should get married uh, no uh Mark. Uh, hindi natin mariresolve ang isang sin by uh, by sinning again okay kasi obviously ang um, unequally yoke ay sin so na, hindi hindi porke nagkaroon ng anak ang uh, ang magkarelasyon ay kailangan pakasalan mo na kagad again yun yung modern uh, thinking ngayon talaga na okay may res- in a way responsibility mo dahil ikaw ang ama pero mali na pakasalan mo just because of that Okay? And dapat hindi mo nga pakasalan kasi unequal yung. Si Angel. Hello po, hello po Pas. A question lang po, kapag po may two na believers, kapag, na right? two believers, two believers, na okay. in a relationship, then ano, nag-fall po, sit din po sila dun sa sexual scene. And hindi po sila natitaken care of dun sa uh, pastor nila in their church, advisable po ba na to encourage them na maghanap or lumipat sa ibang church na may mas ano na pastoral care? Ganito? Oo naman. Uh, yes. Uh, pero actually kung kaibigan mo sila, pwede mo i-apply ang Matthew 18 doon, yung first step. If a brother sins against you, uh, the first step applies even to not just in a specific local church. Kung sila ay alam mong kristyano, no, professing Christian, sabihan mo sila. Kung kaibigan mo sila, sabihan mo sila. Uh, pagmamahal mo yon sa kanila uh, para malaman nila yon. 
Uh, and then of course, kailangan nila ng of course ng growth pa. So kailangan nilang ma-place sana sa local church. Okay, si Gia. Sorry, one more please. Generally speaking, is it worth it to pursue a long distance relationship considering hindi pa kayo in a relationship and you are living in different countries or you don't see yourselves in the same country anytime uh, soon? Depende din, uh, Gia. Eh. Uh, Christian ba to? <laughs> Kasi kung hindi, no? Uh, kung Christian naman, tapos if ever uh, yung, yung inyong, generally speaking talaga, as much as possible, dapat yung kilala mo talaga. Right? Kilalang kilala mo. Kilala mo rin yung pamilya. Right? But we recognize that there are such situations na ganitong nangyayari. Uh, isa sa kailangan i-consider is that, especially those who are thinking of going abroad, gaya niya, kunwari meron siyang karelasyon sa abroad, isa sa mga naniniglek na o oh, na 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 kailangang desisyon no ay yung church sometimes we think just because na outside of the country ay okay yung bansa na yon pero nakakalimutan natin ang spiritual feeding natin so very important then is it tama ba o okay kung ikakasal din kami kung nari uuwi siya at ikakasal kami doon ba kami doon ba kami titira o dito kailangan ko ng maayos na church faithful na church hindi ko sinasabi na gen na talagang lahat ng long distance ay sobrang bawal, guys. Hindi natin sinasabi yon, Kasi may possibility naman na umuwi yung tao if that's the case. Uh, then pwede pang ayusin. Pero uh, biblically speaking, much better po talaga na kilala mo yung tao. So kung, kung kayo ay mag-aasawa tapos uh, or kung kayo ay mag- magiging in a relationship tapos hindi rin kayo magkikita, mahirap po yun. Sige, last question na lang. 10 7 na. So. Hello? I, hello? Isay. Pas, ano po, if there's a single woman po na uh, struggling po sa last, and sabi niyo po kanina, um, dapat po sa pastor siya mag-open up, tama po ba? What if po hindi po siya kung not really sa pastor. Okay. Uh, kung not, hindi, hindi, naman, hindi naman kasi specifically lagging sa pastor. Kasi kung ang, kung ang church ay may 70 plus members, kawawa yung, uh, kung kunari lang, isa yung pastor. So hindi naman necessarily. Kahit sa sister in Christ niya doon sa church, pwede naman. Walang problema doon. So okay lang. But if uh, kung ito ay issue na ito, eh, kunwari, medyo talagang unrepentant na yung uh, yung babae na yon tapos may may kumausap na sa kanya unrepentant pa rin siya tapos after a while after a few months dalawa na o tatlo na yung lumapit sa kanya unrepentant pa rin then yung mga ganung situation pwede nang umabot sa pastor especially pag malapit na papunta na sa church yung yung church discipline yung proseso right so not necessarily sa pastor kaagad Pero may I suggest also kung uncomfortability ang issue uh, it's something na as much as possible ay kailangan nating matanggal sa atin no at sa, sa sa sarili natin no kung meron mang issue of na uncomfortable kasi even yung pag-enter natin sa local church we're saying na we are putting ourselves under uh, sinasubmit natin ang sarili natin sa sa kabuuan ng iglesia kasama na doon of course sa uh, sa pastoral authority. So yun, as much as possible, unti-unti sana niyang matanggal itong pagiging uncomfortable niya sa mga especially sa kanyang pastor. Kasi tutulungan naman siya noon eh. Thank you po. Okay. Sige. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Sige po, tayo po ay again, pag mayroon pa po kayong questions, feel free naman po to ano, to to chat. Um, sa Lark or sa Messenger, no problem po.